Well, we're back from our break. I hope you managed to catch up on some of the shows that you missed and what a show to come back with. Recorded in our little recording studio in Completely Motorbikes FS3 Hospitality Truck back at Cadwell Park. We talk world endurance. We talk winning superstock races. We talk sitting in for Franco Bourne in the Rapid Honda British Superbike team and scoring points in his first race. We also talk about detailing a billionaire's car, which is a story you really don't want to miss. That's enough from me. Let's get on with it. This is the brilliant Tom Ward. Well, one chat to do at Cadwell Park. <laughs> I'll tell you what, sometimes you know we do things where it says podcast make you faster. We don't really need to, do we? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Ward. <laughs> Tom, welcome. Thank you Mate, very much. you've had a good weekend so far, haven't you? Yeah, Cadwell it's been Park. all right. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, I've been, been enjoying it. It's been a bit of a baptism, baptism fire, like going out on Thursday, Friday night because it was... Um, I've ridden obviously a superbike before back in 2020, but I really kind of weren't ready for it then. So whereas now I kind of felt felt ready for it. So it's quite nice to get get out and yeah, it's a shame we had the wet yesterday because I didn't really get to do any testing. It's difficult, isn't it? Especially coming to Cadwell Park, but oh. riding the the uh the rapid Honda in place of Franco Bourne this weekend. Um what a place to come and <laughs> throw your leg back over a superbike. God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially going from the last race I had was at Silverstone, which is like a billiard table smooth. You can run like <laughs> curb on the way in, curb and and then you go to like this wide <laughs> on a superbike. So no, it's been good. Yeah, the bike, the bike's actually really good. So I gel with it quite quick as well. You know, it's like trying to jump on a bike and go fast. You're not used to. So yeah, I feel like I've gelled with it today. Had a, had a good race. So happy. It's something to build on, isn't it? Congratulations on getting your first point in BSP. <laughs> yeah, no. Honda. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It sounds so funny because you sort of see the pit board and P15 and you're like, that's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it's not. Yeah, it's good. That's kind of, that's what I was aiming for in the first one before we came in. No expectation, but you always think, no, you know what you're capable of doing. So, well, we were watching the timesheets, knowing you were coming on tonight, and it's like you got up to twelfth at one point, and we're like, we've just hit the golden goose here. <laughs> <laughs> For all the people that you want to speak to in the whole of the BSB field this weekend, and then we'd spoken during the week about coming on and, yeah. and, and getting you because we've not had you on before, have we? No, I don't we've, think we've so, not no. even done a no. ten minute thing at any point. No, I don't think so. I think no. you. It's because when you guys were doing stuff with OMG, because I was. Obviously, with Brad, with Brad, yeah. yeah, in 2022, so we was always, I seem always to, around all the time. I think we might have done something with Brad, maybe. There might have Possibly. been a point. I seem to think at Snetterton, and I was chatting to. It might have been Fraser Rogers, but that might have been Brad Jones that came along. Somebody uh, came along, but, but I don't think we've. I don't think we. This. Uh, so welcome to Off Track for the first <laughs> time, mate. This is lovely to have you on. I actually used to listen to a lot of the podcasts. I used to listen to yours and um, the Chasing the Racing when I used to do. I used to work for Royal Enfield, mm. so I used to have me uh, headphones in, seven hours sat on a bike, so listening to <laughs> plenty of podcasts. Well, thank you, man. Nice. So you <laughs> yeah, know what to good. expect. You see, yeah. so now you're on the other side of the questions. <laughs> You're going to do a coops now, and all the questions are going. You're just going to be like, when I'm walking my dog, I can do these really well, and then all of a sudden you're on the other side, and you go, oh no. Uh, you're trying to find these questions. You've you've had a busy year. We'll yeah. talk a bit more about Cadwell later on, but you, you've had a, a busy season. One thing it's been really cool. So last year, this year, to and we spoke briefly at Donington last year at World Superbikes yeah. when you were just setting up the World Endurance side of things with um, with Tom Oliver yeah. and the previous rider. Yeah, uh, and we'll, we'll not go down that road. <laughs> um, but to see now how it's progressing and into what it is. Yeah. Tell us a story about going from British Superstock out into World Endurance and really making a good fist of it all. Yeah. Yeah, so it came about, I kind of like fell, like totally honest with that, fell out of love a little bit with the whole BSB thing in 22, just like doing the same thing of like going into a team, sort of like paying a load of money. And then the, the big turning point thing was when obviously you lost Chrissy because it was just like a massive reality check. And I just thought, what are we all doing? Like, you know what I mean? We, you are kind of putting your life on the line. You think you're paying a load of money and then so, so sometimes you don't get treated how you kind of want to be treated. And ultimately you want to be going out and having fun. So at the end of that year, I just thought, no, I'm completely done, completely done with this. But my my passion for riding, I obviously absolutely love riding bikes. I I couldn't, I didn't, I owed it to myself to not like give up on doing that because you worked your whole life towards something and you've got relatively good. You can't say like you're the best of the best, but 
you you know if you're like up the sharp end type of thing um and then it was david Shoebridge wanted to get me to do i think it was bold or the end of yeah. uh, in 2022 i couldn't do it and i've always wanted to be keen on world endurance so that's kind of how it came about and then i went in with tom oliver who have obviously been mates with for ages and he's like one of my best mates um so went and did the world endurance last year on us <laughs> it's uh, the but i mean the guys in the team will like appreciate not appreciate but like they'll understand me saying that their team was like quite a low level team like not good budget the bike was pretty rubbish so going into that was like it was just hilarious because i had i didn't care just went to go and enjoy riding a the bike there's no expectation no nothing and then all of a sudden you're like this is amazing there's loads of track time the people are great everything like it's uh just really just enjoyable so yeah that's kind of how it started and then all of a sudden you're like oh i could actually probably make more of a career in the world endurance paddock than in bsb so it's kind of progressed from there and we're on hondas now and it's kind of allowed open doors back in the uk which i didn't think i never never closed the book with bsb at all but i was kind of wanted if i felt like the right opportunity came up then i could prove what i could do and then jumping on that stock bike this year it's just been like go out enjoy riding the bike and then the results have come um so yeah it's quite quite nice to come back and be enjoying the bsb paddock and do you, can you put your finger on why bsb teams hadn't taken a chance on you before then i think i've probably always been like quite like like a reserved rider like i will never be one of those riders who just go out and just push and crash yeah. because i just think there's you know like i probably always had to pay for it myself so you've always had that thing in the back of your head whereas if you went come along and said right tom here here's 200 grand we can have a new bike every session you'd be like okay you can just take your brain out and do it send it yeah yeah and you and, and a lot of people can do that but i've not been in that position before so yeah i think i think that's probably half half the reason why and ultimately i haven't been winning races i've always been there or thereabouts but only this year have i guess i've kind of proved to people that I could be like a championship contender in like a stock thousand or whatever um but you know it's like right place right time right group of people the bike you know it all has to come together it's like divine timing planets yeah yeah it is and it's funny because in 2022 i was like so obsessed with making it all happen then now it's come together and i don't even really i'm not that fast do you know what i mean it's but it's a patience game as yeah, well. yeah definitely and this yeah. is how the 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 system works and, and the, the listeners and the viewers on the show uh, they know that I'm, I'm a big fan of planets aligning yeah and sometimes like you say when you least expect it's like relationships it's anything oh my god when yeah. you least expect it it just happens it happens yeah. but you push 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 and you try and do everything you can to make it happen like you did yeah. in 22 and all of a sudden this opportunity is here now yeah with uh, Marine Armada, Armada Marine Cable. That's it, yeah. Get that way around. <laughs> it's nice to get the sponsors in the team yeah, the right way is, around. Yeah, definitely. But having that opportunity to go in with Sam Cox's team and, and basically pushing yourself back to the fore in one of the most competitive championships of a BSB weekend. Yeah. And it's like, people are suddenly going, where's Wardy come yeah. from? Whereas most of us that know you and the, the regulars in the paddock just go, there yeah. he is. <laughs> yeah. It's quite funny because I have people back home they're like, what are you doing differently? And I'm like, I was riding that Suzuki last year in World Endurance way harder <laughs> and way better than this Honda. But yeah, it's just like you say, jumping on the right bike and without Sam, like it's, and again, then when you say about the planets aligning, me and Tom Oliver were driving down to the test in Spain and um, basically I got a call from Sam. He said, oh, like I'm, he'd broken his back out in testing. Yeah. And then I was like, I said to him like messing around, oh, you don't want me to jump on your bike, keep this one up. And he said, it's funny you say that actually because they they want someone to ride and like i was thinking if you're not riding the first couple of rounds and then do you, do you know what i mean that that's your opportunity straight away even like with franco this weekend yeah straight away that that opportunity to come up and you think that that could then lead to something more so yeah divine timing and all that it is and the, the best thing is is you're not actually on the sidelines you're not ambulance chasing no you're being invited yeah to take these rides which is so much, it's so much more kudos for you. But I mean, you're on the back now. Well, I did write them down. You're running fifth in the stock championship before this weekend. Yeah. One win, two seconds and a third. Yeah. It's not bad for a lad in <laughs> world endurance, is it? Yeah. It's not really done BSB for two seasons. No. And it was like no preparation at all. Just turned up at Alton. I genuinely, honestly, didn't care where I finished. And I wasn't before. There's so much pressure on it to do well. Whereas I just turned up 
enjoyed riding, finished like fifth or whatever it was in the first race. And I thought I was like, I weren't really even trying. And I was like, we could change bits on the bike, do this, do that. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can, can still win a race. And um, it's a shame really, because like, if you look at the championship, because I missed out knock hill, like it would have been in the running for the championship and I've obviously yeah. missed the other. But then at the end of the day, if you what you're ultimately working towards is like maybe getting a super bike ride, but then only one opportunity like this can then give you that that super that's bike right. ride anyway. So. All of a sudden, it's put you on. Yeah. it's back. It put you back in the eyes yeah. of all the super bike teams. Yeah, because all of a sudden they've gone. There he yeah. is. Yeah, he can. They welcome back, but it also it depends what you want because he's so important. Exactly what you said earlier on to enjoy your riding. Yeah, but unless you can drop in a team that will allow you to do that then it you, you're going back to where you were before mm. and it you, you've got we, we spoke to Herve Poncherel back at MotoGP and he said something quite profound he said you can't be 100% rock and roll you can't be 100% corporate yeah but you can be bits of both yeah yeah so to enjoy your racing but serious at the right time but it is so important for our a happy rider to be a fast rider. Oh god, that is the biggest. That is the biggest difference, I think. When you go out there with a smile and face and enjoying it, like today is well the same with Sam. I'm riding with like Sam Cox, who's been friends with for ages. Got Tom Oliver, who's like being like my mechanic, and obviously ride with him in the world endurance. Just going out having a laugh. It's just you know what I mean to to have that opportunity given to us from like Armada and Dan and the guys, the guys. From there, they've created this amazing little team. And if you come down and look at it, you would be like, we just look like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> just like, do you know what I mean? You've got Graham, Sam's dad pulling his hair out. Like everyone's <laughs> like chaos all over the place. They're just having a laugh. Yeah. And it's similar with 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 the team which I'm in now. They're obviously a lot more professional because it's like a super bike team, but everyone is so nice, so chilled, no pressure. Go out and just have fun. But you've got the it's again, it's having the right people around you that make that happen. Yeah. So you've got Dave Hewson in the team, you've got Matt from Marvel HCL. The Boasty still knocking around. Yeah, Boasty's there, yeah, he's quality. You've yeah. got so much knowledge and information. Yeah. Three completely different characters. You're getting your profile raised by being on Obsession Engineering's yeah. YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got that as you've forgotten about that, haven't you? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so Dave's doing all his camera work for, I'll, I'll give him a plug. We, we, we like Dave. <laughs> Obsession Engineering's YouTube channel. Um, but he's given us a wave over the barriers before and he's mentioned us on his, uh, on his show. That's but he's good. such a great fella. But that then helps nurture you. And especially the Honda, it's a good bike to come in on. It's a good all-round package. And they've given you the tools this weekend to yeah. go, welcome to Cadwell, go on, have yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a bit of a, it's always a, it's a hard track. It's really hard track to get right. And like the harder you, the harder you push, the slower you go. So it's one of them things you've got to like relax into it. Um, but yeah, the bike, obviously you'd love to have like a week of testing and like do, you know what I mean? Change this, change that, change this. Because then you know you would get to that point where you're like so comfortable with the bike. When I jump on the stocker now, I can just go out the block straight away. I know exactly what the thing does, how it behaves. So you can just ride it to the limit straight away. Whereas obviously on a new bike, you can't you can't do that. Like it doesn't matter who, like, who you are, you've just got to, you know, build into it and learn. That's the thing with a super bike as well. It's everyone. Everyone always says, "Oh, they're so hard to ride. they has got no electronics, all this." And you think, actually, you jump on it. I'm like, this is like easier to ride than the stock. Like the throttle, like it turns better. Everything you got better brakes. It's just the fact that you don't have that safety net of the of the traction control. Yeah, but you got but, a stiffer chassis. You got the you, the, the tires, the brakes. Like you say, everything. Every, there are major upgrades. Yeah. Honestly, it's not just a stocker on steroids. No. Yeah. Yeah, when you first get it, I mean, it bit me back yesterday when usually if you have a little moment on like a stocker, you can like lose a rear and sort of like when you roll out of it, you can sort of put your weight forward and it will kind of come back in line. Whereas yesterday I had a little moment and then it just turned into this massive moment that turned into a huge crash. And I was like, oh, that doesn't usually happen. <laughs> <laughs> There's the learning curve. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's the learning curve coming in. But it was wet. Yeah. And riding a, yeah. a super bike in the wet around Cadwell Park when you, you it's been a while since you've ridden a superbike and it, it, it's a difficult place to come we spent a lot of time on a stocker of varying degrees of suzuki last year yeah honda this year it makes a massive difference so it's to be expected and plenty of people fall off in the way God, yeah. yeah 
I think probably went out with the wrong mindset. I was like, looked at Saturday and I was like, it's going to be wet. It's going to be a washout. Got nothing to achieve. Just like literally ride around, make sure like the handlebars, yeah. the rest, all that's fine. Whereas if I probably went out, I was like, if it was stock, I'd have been like, oh, I need to be top three. You'd be pushing on. You probably wouldn't have a crash. You'd have loads of moments and you'd be up there. Whereas I went out, just spun a couple of laps, was like obviously absolutely nowhere. And then crashed because you're so far away from the limit that, yeah. They are the difficult bikes to ride away from the limit. Yeah. The super bike, from yeah. what I understand. Same as most Definitely. GP bikes, most race bikes. Maybe yeah. stock as you can get away with it a little bit more. Yeah. But any, the more rigid they become, the more difficult they are to ride slowly. Definitely. It's so funny you say, say that because earlier, when as soon as I went started the race, I just like just push on straight away, and the bike handles so much better when you're actually pushing it. And then when you're when you're close to the limit, I always explain to people like I don't understand how you, you get so close to the limit and then you don't crash because you're pra you're so you are so close to the limit. You have that you can feel exactly what's going on. Whereas if you're like twenty percent away from it, and then you take a twenty five percent jump, you are just going to crash. Whereas if you're riding like five percent away from it all the time, you you know what I mean? You, you've got loads of feel. But in in your mind, as a, as a as an experienced racer, that five percent is huge. Oh, massive! Like you look in Superbike now, and I think obviously finishing fifteenth, I was like, oh, it's not too bad. And then the first thing you look at is how far away you are from the leader. Yeah. So I need to take like fifteen seconds out of my race time to then be, you know what I mean? And you've got that top, which today was 10. like 0.8 a lap. Oh, it's mental. Yeah, <laughs> literally mental. Yeah, you've got ten people within five tenths. Which is nothing. No, it's, nothing. it's not. Yeah, it sounds a lot when you read it on the on the timesheets and you go like with with um, Billy McConnell in in Q one. Yeah, puts one point one into everybody. It's like, oh, did he no. did he go through the chicane? <laughs> <laughs> did they miss that? It was a brilliant lap from him. But he, having that consistency and keeping those consistent lap times and not get pulled along in, yeah. into the more experienced lads that are around you because like, like Hickey wasn't too far away. Yeah. Max Cooks had a couple of seasons. And these lads are doing it week in, week out. Yeah. How difficult is it not to get carried away and tuck in behind and start chasing? Yeah, I mean, the beginning of that race, I was sat behind Hickey and then sort of like to begin with, I, f I think I probably had a lot more grip than him. And then I kind of, because obviously I, I raced against him and um, Brooks at Silverstone. Yeah. So you kind of know on a level playing field on stock bikes, you know, like we had a good battle and I ended up like in front of him. And then in the other practices and stuff, you know, you can, do you know what I mean? You know, they're not a million miles ahead. You're they're not aliens, level, are they? No, they're not, no one's aliens. So um, earlier when I sat behind, I thought, oh, this is actually quite comfortable. Um, and then Eden had, had obviously was with Danny Kent for quite a while. Um, but had like a little moment and just kind of thought, just stay there. Just, you know what I mean? You haven't got, you're not going to learn much more by pushing to make up one space. But um, yeah, I mean, they, those guys weren't too far ahead. So I think the world endurance really helps with like the lap time thing. Yeah. Just being like, you know, same lap time, same lap time. And I think my fastest lap was on lap 13. So the, the bike works when it's kind of, you've got less grip. Yeah. Like the bike, the chassis turns better. I don't know whether it's a Honda thing because it's the same in world endurance. It sort of comes to you more and you've got more feel for it. Were you expecting that on the super bike or was that a surprise? Not really. I think like they obviously the tyres have mental grip in comparison to what we ride on. We ride on like the hardest compound tyres <laughs> in, in world endurance and they've just got like, they're mega. It's like riding a flat track bike, come in sideways, get on the gas and it starts going sideways and you're just sideways the whole way out. So it's, it's good, good for, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's good fun. But the, the, the Pirellis have got so much grip. You can do the first two or three laps, you're just 100% throttle. And the thing doesn't move. So then once a the grip goes off, you can act to, for me, like the chassis is like, it's easier to, to steer, like rear wheel steer, yeah. carry on turning through the corners, even though you haven't got the outright grip. But you can finish the corner off a lot yeah. easier when the tyres have lost a little bit of grip. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the when you get to the, like, if you look at the front boys, like the top five, they'll be able to, like, you almost have, like, a different setup for qualifying. I wouldn't be surprised if they're slightly different, you know what I mean, for one lap. Yeah. Just because a bike behaves so different when you've got grip to no grip. Qualifying trim. Yeah, yeah. Literally you qualifying hear it in trim. MotoGP, don't you? Oh, God. The you bikes are in bikes. qualifying trim. This is race yeah. trim. I think don't they even run a little tank in MotoGP. They run like a little qualifying tank. It really wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I'm sure that they run like a two or three litre qualifying tank. So they have a couple of laps to go at it. And then 
tires, everything. It's yeah, <laughs> another level. What did you learn in the race? Because you, we did the big two and a half hour test on Friday night, which is everybody's well, the ones that haven't tested here already. Yeah, it's just track familiarity and getting used to going really quickly on a three foot wide circuit. Yeah, and then raining yesterday, but then going out today in the dry in, a, in purposeful action against a grid of a full of superbike yeah, riders. Yeah. What was the biggest thing you learned today? <laughs> Mm, it's hard to say really um i think that the bike setup was like the bike was easier to ride because we on friday the bike was kind of like how franco had it yeah and like ergonomically like sat on the bike it was really uncomfortable for me like wasn't comfortable at all so like changing bar position the seat the tank all of those things just physically being comfortable on the yeah. bike i couldn't really give good feedback until i'd done all that so today this morning in the dry was the first time i actually could give could give dave like good feedback of like it's definitely too soft on the rear fronts like feels high in the middle of the turn and yeah. stuff like that so i didn't oh, it's hard i didn't feel like i learned that much earlier really which is nice Did. to hear because it, it shows a level that you can ride at yeah yeah that you're comfortable definitely, in riding yeah. amongst those boys the 20 15 Moto 3 world champion. <laughs> you know, but it, it's right. This is it, it, this is why I was so keen to have you on the show, especially as the, I mean, we'd, we've spoken about it for ages, but you live like in France compared to Pretty where much, we are. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult to catch up with you at various places. <laughs> and we've missed the last three rounds of BSB. So yeah, it's the yeah. first opportunity back. It's like we've, we've got to sit down and we, we've got to do something. So I appreciate yeah. your time, mate. This is, this is no, fascinating. Quality. Um, when you got the wind, when you got the wind back at, um, Back at Brands, that was that. I mean, that was home round for you yeah, as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Which is a superb place to do. Yeah. It. How did that feel for you then, being back at the sharp end of, of Stock Thow and and kind of that knowing feeling of going, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, it was really nice. I kind of it's a funny thing because in 2022, I was like manifesting that all the time. It was always like always thinking like that was my goal, and and I remember thinking, I remember, I remember literally thinking like dreaming before I go to bed like I've been stood on the top step looking down on like my family and the, like your team and stuff and then looking at the winner's trophy and it was like almost like deja vu when I was actually stood up there and I sort of like had a bit of a laugh and sort of like looked up because like before I go off I usually like say a little thing to Chrissy type of thing yeah. so I always think like I kind of like right when when like obviously Chrissy went I wasn't like best mates with him or anything but like we obviously were teammates together and gone really well and I feel like away from the track we were like really really similar people and um, we kind of we kind of shared that thing so it was it was it was funny because I know he would always be like I believe in you and I know you'd yeah I know you've got it do you know what I mean he was that type of person and um, so it was quite nice when I stood up on the top step and I sort of like yeah it was funny looking down but yes yeah, it's, it's nice are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always, it's, yeah, it's always, I really struggled with that because I was always like, why would someone like so great get taken? Mm. And then you, you've got to, at the time, it's really hard to see. But then like I, like the, the way I live my life now is a large part of the way he was is, is why I, do you know what I mean? Live the way I live now. So it's kind of funny how you, that's the nice part you take from it because you always go, there's no positive in this at all, no, like really. losing someone. Absolutely. But there's a massive, massive positive that yeah. their legacy like, lives on forever. And and a lot of the reason why I still ride is because of him. Because I was like, oh, I'm going to give up. That, But I know that if you're on the phone to me, I'd be like, mate, you can't give up. You can't give up. And yeah. would in, if, if the circumstances were reversed, you know he would have carried yeah, on. Yeah, definitely. For you. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. So that that's got to yeah. give you that that oh, lovely God. feeling. Yeah, and you know the logo. You? You, you know the story of the logo. Oh, I don't. You know the story of our logo. Yeah. The bell helmet. Yeah, is Chrissy's. Chrissy's. That's so cool. Chrissy's bell helmet. We have one pink stripe for Chrissy. That's quality. One pink stripe for Keith Farmer. That's so cool. That's Keith how we. That, absolute legend. As exactly. Well. Have, yeah. Another good friend of ours. Yeah. So Chrissy, he, he was amazing. Yeah. He came to me back at it might have been the end of eighteen. So I'm going to start a podcast. What do I need to do? Really, that's so cool. Because I was doing Motopod for years yeah. before that, and we'd had Chrissy on a couple of yeah. times, and he, he, he ran. We had a chat about it, and then he just picked the button, the the podcast button up, up. fucked off into the so, distance. Yeah, that's one it's thing like he had. He was typical like, yeah, Chrissy. Yeah. He, he would make it amazing. Head. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's such a cool thing. It's just had so much drive and determined. Even like the superbike team just created a whole superbike team. Yeah. <laughs> On the shoestring Bikes budget, built, but yeah. was absolutely brilliant at it. Yeah. With Crowe and the team yeah. and Stan and the rest of them. It was it was it was stunning to it, and that's that's what drives us on to do what we do oh, in definitely. the same way that yeah. it drives you. Yeah. The one thing we didn't get to do was tell him we were doing this uh, because we only agreed this that weekend yeah, really? at Donington, and it was like no, nobody knew until I thought when did we when did we launch it? Was it the February? We launched it in the February that we were going to do. We spoke to a few people at the bike show, yeah. and we were doing it as a hobby at the time yeah, anyway, yeah, while yeah, I was yeah. still working for yeah. OMG. But the, the time had come, we'd done the British Championship at OMG, it was Donington Park, so it's fairly odds on yeah. that the team and Brad will be British champions come Brad. Yeah. The opportunity came along to to build this, which didn't get a chance to tell him. Yeah. But we know damn well it's he'd have been like that. so, so yeah, happy yeah, for definitely. us. That's, a, that's an amazing thing with him. He was never like, do you know what I mean? Never bad mouth anyone or like... Mm. He'd always only want the best for anyone. Like it's building each other. Yeah, this is why. Yeah. So the great thing of the podcast is, is we get to sit and talk to to you guys who you go out there and do it. I can't, so I sit and talk about yeah. it. But there's, there's there's nobody that comes on the show that we can't. It's it's not blowing smoke. It's showing the talent. Yeah. And you've not been at the forefront of the talent show for for a while. But now that's coming back, yeah. this podcast, it's all about, it's timing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we were over the moon when you got that point today. It's like, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 I know. Yeah. We got all, all these questions that I don't need now because <laughs> we can talk about the point. We can talk about BSB. It's the oh. coolest thing. But the world endurance side is is absolutely fascinating because you see Linny that has gone through oh, to, yeah. he's having an absolute but Regardless of what happened at the end of last season, he was loving world endurance yeah. anyway. With yeah. Suzuka, the times he's done that. He speaks to Tommy Bridewell, he's done Suzuka. And all of the the, um, the the big lads have done it, Leon and Johnny and Alex yeah. and Toprak. But to go and do the 24-hour races, to do Bold, to do the, what's Baldor, right? Bold, Baldor's 24. Baldor's 24, and then Le Mans is 24. Yeah, 24, and then Spa was 8-hour this year, but yeah. last year it was 24-hour, but they've done it. It's a bit of a da like dangerous track at night because they don't really have any lighting and stuff. So no, it's a bit dark out the back. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Especially like when you go up the Kemmel Strait and then you've got like a, a light on the braking marker. Any way to explain it? So you know when you're driving through a tunnel at night and it's like really, really bright. And you come out the other side, it's pitch black, and you're like, fucking hell, I can't see anything. Like that, it's like the same. But you imagine doing like 180 mile an hour at the back straight, hit the braking marker, it's like, where's the corner? Where's the corner? Where's the corner? <laughs> So it's a bit, yeah, not a bit convinced sketchy. by that. No. <laughs> That's why they did the eight hour this year because it's obviously really not convinced the daylight. by that. <laughs> so how do you adjust to to twenty four hour racing? Because it, we we watch it on the TV and then we can we can watch the start of the Le Mans. You watch it for a couple of hours. You go off and do some yeah. have a bit of a life. You go to bed. You yeah. wake up. You boys are still pedaling oh, round. Yeah. It's a weird race because like I never used to watch it. I used to think it was so boring. I remember staying up to watch one of Brad when Brad did the Suzuka. Yeah, watched that for like five hours or whatever. And I was like, it's like what, like watching paint dry. But when you're there, it is so much more entertaining than like this. And it sounds stupid, but if you're there and you've got like you're involved in the team and yeah. what's going on, it's just like non-stop like amazing action. But when you're when you're doing the race, like if I started at Spa. You go out and then you come in in like second position. So, oh, it's mint. And then you're sat there like having a massage and like there's still a race on. <laughs> We're in a race, but I'm not racing. It's really weird. I've got to get my cat in there. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> and I've got to eat some food and they're still racing around. <laughs> Do you, so when, when you're sort of preparing for it in terms of 24 hour race, do you adjust your sleep patterns to, or do you, do you just push on through gels, things like that, and the adrenaline? Pretty just much, yeah. Through. I don't sleep. I'm not a very good sleeper. Like whenever we do stuff, I just can't. Like, you know, when people go, "I'm so tired, I'm not going to fall asleep when I'm driving." Mm. I've never, I, could, I just could never fall asleep while driving. Okay, I don't know why. So it obviously work. It works well for me. But in so I start a race, and then I'm usually fine until sort of like the fifth stint. And then when I start to get tired and like start to like that time at like four in the morning i just don't i don't sleep and just keep on eating and then i don't know i don't i don't seem to struggle that badly 
Oh. Just my stomach is the worst thing. If I can't, sometimes I eat food too quick and then you have like stomach cramps and then you can't, you've got no appetite. Appetite. So that's one of the hardest things is to fuel, fuel right, hydrate right, electrolytes, all stuff like that. Because you are like, it's like a car. If you just keep on putting petrol in, it's going to keep on going, keep yeah. on going. Whereas if you're like running lower and lower, it's going to start to like cough and choke. And so we end up sort of grazing more than... Yeah. Just little bits. Yeah. L little and often. Yeah, definitely. I think some people do the electro uh, the gels and stuff, but you really want to stick to like whole normal foods. Have your dinner at like 7 p.m. Snack on, you know, just normal bits in between. Have your tea. Have your tea, yeah. What do I call it? Dinner. Dinner. You have dinner. That's yeah. what my nanny, granny yeah, calls it. Dinner at 12. Dinner. Dinner at 12, one o'clock. Tea. And then supper. Tea. My left calls it a supper. Supper's about nine ish. Is that actually real? Do you call it supper as well? That's a posh Kentus thing. Breakfast, dinner, tea, supper. Okay, now how many meals do you have? Do you have that rag pudding as well, what it's called? <laughs> My friend Dave always goes on about it. Like, Go get you a bit of rag pudding. Like, yeah. oh, well, what is that? It sounds horrendous. Well, one of Jen's favourite meals is cheese pie. Don't know what that is. Like. Just a cheese pie. This that is why right. you live near in France. This is why you come for get living Honestly, up north, mate. The food that we have is so beige. It, it, world Endurance, it's like croque monture, which is this posh name for a cheese and ham toast. That's a cheese and ham toast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Croquette potatoes. <laughs> Croquette potatoes. Smiley. Cheese, more cheese, more cheese. Smiley faces. Smiley faces. <laughs> and then some croissants and pan chocolat in the morning. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit of French, French chef kiss. Have some of that. By the end of it, you're pretty blocked up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about racing at Spa because you guys are the only ones that get to do it. Nobody else gets to do it. No World Superbikes don't get to do it. MotoGP doesn't get to do it. Well, you get some classic races there, but World Endurance get to race at Spa. Tell me about Spa. At, just on another, absolute another level. I think the first time we went there, we did, went and did a track day. Me and Tom Oliver went over and it was really bittersweet because we started in the morning, we came in and you're just like two mates on a track day like, and you're just riding around like, this is insane. And we came in, you're like buzzing. And then the track, it got cancelled in the afternoon. Someone crashed and died. So it was just like, like this to this and we were like and where he crashed was through this Blanchemont and I ran off the track there earlier on in the in the day and I was like that is so sketchy if you it's like maybe mm, oh, I don't know like eight to ten meters of ru like runoff yeah and then a big drop like this big into some gravel like four meters of gravel and then there's a, a wall and I was looking at him like you're coming through there in sixth gear like pretty much pinned and I was like if anything happens you tuck the front whatever you are like not saying you're brown bread, but no. it is not ever going to end it's well at not, all. No. So it was kind of like, and then you've got to, a bit like this track. You've got to respect it. Yeah. You've got to respect it. And and I think we like we're so used to going to the UK tracks, and when we go around it, you're not even looking at barrier because we've been doing it for ten years. Whereas when you go there, the f and then you're looking, man, you're thinking, God, that barrier is close. That barrier is close. That barrier is close. And then you know what I mean? The stuff you'd never even look at before. Oh but, no. But yeah, one, the, the track is probably the, the best track like I've ever ridden. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. <laughs> <laughs> Daz has had a couple of beers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a sniff of the barmaid's apron. I'm not, I'm not even editing that out because that was Darren Fry, the team boss for FS3 for completely motorbikes, FS3 Kawasaki. Bless him. We were going to invite him in, but he wanted to do it naked, and I said that was just yeah. that's a step too far. He could bear a little towel, but it's a you don't nobody you wants to see Darren towel, Fry. Yeah, exactly. Just, just one of those little yeah. that the divers a flannel. have. Flannel. <laughs> <laughs> Ones that the divers have. And one thing I to touch on uh, for the Le Mans 24 hour, that just it, come, it just slipped my mind for a second. The team that you had was yourself, was Tommy Gunn, Tom Oliver, yeah, and Michael Dunlop as well, yeah. How cool was that? Oh man, it was yeah, it was insane. It was funny because Steve Hicken called me up and was like, "Oh, Michael wants to come and do the um, come and do the um, twenty four hour with you." It's like Michael, and he's like Michael Dunlop. I was like, oh, yeah, "That's pretty cool." And I just thought, "Oh, maybe he's just like saying he wants to do it, but he's yeah. actually not that fast." And then I was just at work, like rubbing something down. My phone was going off, and he's like, "I'm not even going to try and do his accent." But <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, he just started chatting, and then we met him out in Spain, and then he's so sound, yeah. just the nicest guy. But he's just a bike rider who loves riding bikes, so so sound, and he proper got like proper got stuck in in the race as well. He was sort of like, it was probably difficult for him because our team is a bit of a 
like it's a bit of a shit show to begin with and he's obviously used to t- like riding well prepared bikes and we had just got this bike and didn't really have a clue what we're doing with it so he was like you know trying to make the bike better but we didn't really know what we were doing <laughs> so when it came down to it we rode at Le Mans and the bike wasn't very well set up at all but we like he was just like it is what it is get on with it and ride it and he was but it was he was he's so fast as well he's so fast in all conditions I shouldn't really say that. I shouldn't really burst my up his ass. <laughs> wee free piece. He's got so many names. He's got the, the wee Dingleberry. So he'll never call you by your actual name. He'll call you three piece, Dingleberry, Spunk Bubble, um, or that John Joe. I don't know what John Joe means. His poor mate would get it. They had a really, really nice mate who turned up and helped do his visors and that. And he was just can shout and abuse at him all the just, time. Just get his face to be a bit. He, he, he did it with Mike Norbury, didn't he? With Mike Norbury, it was, it was racing, uh, he races TT, he does um, Scarborough and a few others. He's had a bit of a rest from racing, but now he's come back again this year. Right. And and Strawberry is his nickname. Right. And uh, Strawberry, Mike's a great guy, an awful lot of time for, for Strawberry. But of course, Michael calls him Raspberry. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> Typical Michael Dodd. <laughs> Here, Raspberry. Absolute legend. <laughs> yeah, I need to get... My girlfriend's really good at doing accents, so I should really get her to... I am I just, terrible. I'm so bad. Awful. And I feel like I'm really good at doing them. And then they come out, and then Steph's just like, shut up. Stop. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> what are you doing for a day job these days? Um, so I work as... Me and my dad have got a little paint shop, so we basically do, like, cars, bikes, do, like, like restoration work and stuff like that it's like actual physical paint spray and like body work on cars job. yeah I've always I've done it well I did it with my dad and then I worked worked for Royal Enfield worked as a car de- detailing did that with Brad that was hilarious tell oh, me tell mate. me tell me about Warden Ray <laughs> Enterprises well it's so funny because I don't know what commentator is but he's always like oh Brad and Brad Ray and Tom Ward they've got their own detailing company I was like we do not have our own detailing <laughs> company we work for my friend my friend like had this detailing company and he's um, we just ended up like detailing supercars but you would not believe the places that we went to we went to like I probably get shot for saying it, but we went to like this Alicia Ushmanoff's house in London. Really? Yeah, he's like uh, he's like one of the richest blokes like in the world. Yeah, he's a proper Russian oligarch. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we turned up to his house and um, like we, me and Brad, ended up fucking like rubbing his uh, like polishing his cars. But like we turned up and like wound down the windows and like we were outside this cricket pitch in London and like it was so like James Bond, it was so cool. There was like the street that like the lamppost and like the things had like shutters on them and they had cameras inside and I was like, wow, this is weird. Gates open up, there's this huge house on the left. Pull in, that's not even the house, that's just the gatehouse. Like six security guards come out like Gurkhas, they're checking round the van for like bombs. Like you got Brad there, not <laughs> Bro, oh, geez. Bro, what's happening here? <laughs> like that. Drive round to all these like cars parked down the side, like Bentley Mole Sands, like everything's bulletproof doors and stuff. Get out of the van. Brad gets a skateboard out, starts doing kick flips. I'm like, Brad, can I put it away? <laughs> Honestly, it was so funny. Oh, oh we had some proper laughs. He lives like that. Is that Regent's Park up that way near Honestly, Lords? I don't know. Yeah, it was somewhere like that. It yeah. Was me- the actual house was on another level. It was just like. Yeah, obscene. You will never see anything like that again. No, no. Ever. I mean, I think I know rich people, but that is like just on another level. The bloke, the bloke who actually got in contact with us to do it was just head of his cars. So he just looked after his cars. Like imagine being that rich, you just have a guy who looks after your cars. And he came, he came down and kind of came to suss us out. So he came down in this Range Rover and got us to like machine polish it all. He was obviously pretty happy with it, but was obviously like, are these guys all right? Are they safe? It just took one look at me and Brad, just like two absolute goons. Like, well, they do a good job and they're definitely not going to try and abduct him. So. <laughs> you don't even know who he is. He's no, like, so, so no we didn't. Geezer. We didn't. So when you come back and Google him later and you see his $300 million yeah, super yacht and yeah. everything that he's got, that's, I think, since probably been impounded. Um, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, oops, it, <laughs> moving swiftly on. We shouldn't have said his name. I, I do like our podcast, but we will keep rolling. Yeah, if we both... <laughs> Go missing. <laughs> this, this is where we're at. You know where we've gone. Hell. <laughs> Don't know where you're gonna send it. We'll send it. Jennifer's behind the camera. Just get in touch with her. I think we covered that off nicely. <laughs> yeah, we did. I don't think yeah. anybody noticed. Um but usually we send um questions out to our patrons um before we have a guest on, but because we confirmed this a little bit late, we didn't get a chance. So 
Jennifer tonight has, has put it out on uh, on Instagram for for a couple of questions. So we, we've got uh, we've got three questions for you. Um, first one is from Jason Neal from Photostrada. Oh yeah, so we know we, we know Jason, Jason well. Um, you love in the WC. Do you think it's helped you develop as a rider? Yeah, I definitely do. Yeah, at first I was like, oh no, I don't think it has. But I think just the amount of laps that you do, you end up adjusting. Like you adapt, you adapt your riding style all the time. So like, as the tire goes off, if the something's not right with the bike, you end up ad like adapting your riding style as you're riding. And you imagine just riding for like fifty five minutes. You get twenty minutes in, you're like, oh, I've still got like another thirty minutes left. Yeah. So you end up just playing around with stuff. Okay. And like rear wheel steering, using more back brake on the way in, on the way out. So yeah, def it definitely does help. Even though you're not riding the same, like, you know what I mean, 100%, you're riding at like 90%. Yeah. You, but then at the same time, your, your body's getting relaxed. Like today, we've just done 18 laps. And if you said to me, oh, 18 laps on the super, you'd be absolutely knackered. Felt fine when I came in. Like I felt fine out on the bike, which was is obviously from... I obviously do a lot of training as well, but like the world endurance, I think has helped that massively. It's an interesting, it's almost like an extended, it's extended testing, it's extended riding. There's no substitute for bumming seat time. Oh God, yeah. And you look at them boys out in Spain, it's all they're doing that. Yeah. Just ride bikes day in, day out. Look at Top Rack, he rides. It's exactly what I was just going to say. Three times a week, you know. Yeah. Super Riding his R3, his R7, yeah, what whatever, mean, yeah. just anything to keep bike fit, yeah. to keep riding, to keep going. But we don't, hey, we don't have the weather here. Oh start. God, yeah. Which makes it difficult, and also just money. Oh, it's not man. cheap. No, as you know, over the years of, of funding riding, it's crazy money, it's, and it's not getting any easier no. at the minute. That's one thing I would like to like. If that could change, like that was the thing with <clears throat> the thing with Chrissy, like him, like he deserved to have a good ride in superbike, yeah. and it's kind of like that's one thing I would love to change. And I think you know, like I spoke to Stu about it before, and he know like that money makes that you know makes a world go around it's the same in cars the same in bikes but like it's so hard because unless people were putting in crazy crazy money like sponsors yeah. then you'd be able to give more back to the riders or or the teams would have more incentive if the championship were giving them you know 100 grand for a race win they'd be like oh yeah we can afford to pay the rider and so it is, it's, yeah, it is, like, I see it from both sides. It's really hard. It's it really is a business hard. at the end of the day. Yeah, of course it is. For, yeah. for Stuart, it's a, it's a race series, but it's a business. Yeah. We had um, a rider messages last week and go, Dave, can I come on the podcast? I've got to raise X amount of money for next year because it's going to cost me between 60 and 100 grand to run right. a, to, to ride a superbike. Right, yeah. And coming on the show would raise my race profile. Yeah, yeah. Which I thought, well, Rider X, that'd be great. But if I do it for you, I have to do it for everybody. Yeah, God. And then and I want people on with a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the nicest possible way. It's not here just to go, this Help is Rider my... X. Yeah, he's yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, he yeah, can do yeah. this. And he's not had the best of seasons this year. So how do you put a positive spin on that when at the same time as a podcast, we're looking at sponsorship to try and keep going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got to try and get help you get sponsors at the same time where <laughs> yeah. we'd like to have sponsors yeah. to be able to do this show to put you out on that platform to then go hang on a minute <laughs> it's all like it's, a fucking but it just shows circle. that the, the teams are struggling for the, the racing's oh, in a difficult God, yeah. position at the minute especially domestic racing yeah i know we're going oh, off on a bit, bit of a, a side thing here but like you no, understand good, it that's more one than thing that does need to like if that can change that will change you know massively like i think if you look at the level of talent that we've like lost over the years yeah you go back like even like you look at lap times and stuff and like we've oh, just could name like 10 amazing riders that we've we've lost because they haven't had the money and they've had they've got the talent but unfortunately like what you don't want us to do is it to turn into like car racing where it's just rich man racing you take the words right their, out of yeah. my mouth and it is like i've like <laughs> sounds savage but obviously if you had the money to do it and i had a kid you'd but then you just don't feel like you've earned it. Mm. You, you, and you don't want bikes to turn into that because we want to be able to send people into World Superbikes to MotoGP who are like mm, on another level, do you know what I mean? Like really talented. Whereas I feel like fortunately in the last like five years that has kind of like fil filtered out slightly. We're not going to have a 2008, 2009 Johnny Ray, Norge, Cal, no. Tom Sykes, no. boys like that going up, yeah. four or five lads in two years yeah. going up to World Superbike becoming world super sport world yeah. superbike champions ultimately going on to be a moto gp race winner yeah i can't see that at the minute no i can't you need to bring something back in like the r6 cup the triumph triple challenge like triumph triple challenge was the nearest thing to it but you look back to them r6 cup days how many 
people came through because it was like budget racing. You yeah. could, parents could afford to not afford, but you know, it I mean, was you more could chuck in like ten grand. Whereas now, like to do stock thousand, it's like one hundred twenty grand. You know, to have a good shot at it, which is mental which money. Is potentially, <laughs> it's, it's an expensive hobby if you're not. Yeah. If, if you've got the rider that isn't going to make it, that you know, you find your level fairly quickly. Yeah, definitely. And you yeah. know that okay, this is going to be. So this is my expensive hobby. I can be a sponsorship outlet, which is tax deductible for a couple of friends who own big companies who can keep me going eleven weekends yeah. a year. Yeah. Great. Absolutely superb. But if you want to do what what Brad's done previously, what Taz has done, and what you're what you're looking towards doing and all right, a little bit later in years. When's your birthday by the way? My birthday was last week. It was last week, yeah. wasn't it? Twenty one. Plus that. Plus Happy nine. birthday. Nine. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't gonna say you were thirty. <laughs> you're thirty. It's ridiculous. Bad, it? Someone asked me the other day, because I have twenty one on my um like Instagram thing, like you know on the Buy yeah. whatever it's called, and um, everyone just you know, like, twenty one years old. I was like, no, it's skincare routine. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. moisturizer, <laughs> SPF, and is that right? Yeah, SPF. Yeah, Jen's a massive advocate of, really? of SPF. Steph always all the time, about. all the time. That's why Steph hates me when he gets got the to. first day of holday, and I just lie there like this, like a lobster. <laughs> no wonder why I've got Flip crow's over. feet. <laughs> well, I'm fifty one. I just got to you just keep rolling on with it. You just do the best you can. But now I find motorcycle racing at the minute is is in a really difficult position because the teams are struggling to get sponsorship. They're passing it on to the riders who are also struggling to get yeah. sponsorship. So you're in a bit of a vicious circle. Oh, it's like, oh, we want hundred grand from you to ride the bike. Brilliant. I just don't. Where know am I going to find yeah. that from? I don't know how you fix. I honestly don't know how you fix it. I don't know how no. to get more money back into it. I honestly don't know. And whether get bigger sponsors coming yeah. into the sport that Stuart can put it put back into. Yeah, it, that might be a different way to do it. But it, 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 it's a tricky I mean, one. I think if you looked into other things, I know that UCI, um, like the like cycle, yeah, um, they have like a they implement like a minimum wage thing. But I honestly don't know how it works. Like where they get their money from? Because if you're a professional cyclist and you get they implement like a minimum wage of like thirty grand a year. Because if you're a professional cyclist, you are literally training for like five to six hours every single day. So you can't you can't really have a normal job. You can't like, go detailing no, no. Russian oligarchs. Can't ask, can <laughs> no, you? <laughs> you could, but I think you'd be pretty tired. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer for that. If we did, it would have been fixed. I think by yeah. now. It just, yeah, it's just a tricky. Yeah. It's just a tricky position that that the sport finds itself in. And it's nice to talk to a rider about it who, who understands it and isn't yeah. one that's sort of focused on sponsorship. You, yeah, you've seen both sides of the sport. You know how Definitely. this thing works. It's oh god. Yeah, and I think it's, that's part of what's helped you become the rider you are now by having those experiences yeah yeah definitely because you've got a, some you, you treat it in two different ways you like, oh, i'm paying this team a load of money and i'm not getting what i want blah 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 but then like armada they put in they're they're there because they want the riders to do well and they want to take that pressure off so when you go out and you don't have to worry about cr paying the crash damage or you, you like mentally as a rider you just like straight away you're in such a good headspace and you can be relaxed so it's like there's such like amazing people to come on board and help and they don't want you know what i mean they don't want much out of it they just want to be able to be in the sport to help people like me and sam and tom yeah. oliver give people an opportunity to show what they're capable of doing because without that where does your opportunity yeah. come from it's a yeah. hundred thousand pounds yeah. please. <laughs> yeah anyway moving swiftly on moving swiftly on um lee eubank slick moto events who sponsored um our hervé poncheral show last week cool um Will you come flat track training with Slick Moto events this winter? I'll be well up for that. Oh, man, I love flat track. Absolutely useless, but I absolutely love it. Lee, we need to organise a day. <laughs> and nice. we'll do it through the podcast. We'll get a couple of the boys together. Oh, I'd be so keen for that. I've got flat I'll put boasties. As well. Yeah. Pizza. You've got a flat tracker? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've got a super moto and flat tracker. I don't know how to use it, but... You can come to Boasties and use the little hundreds up here, thanks. Oh, you know, I'm bringing cool. your own pucker kit and your, your Husqvarna. Or, has Brad still got his Husky? He's got, no, I can't remember. Super did, Moto, yeah. No, he had, I think he's got KT in, but he wrote it off when we are out in Spain. He went straight for a fence at a go-kart track. <laughs> Nearly knocked himself out. <laughs> Hasn't changed, has he? No, no. God bless him. Didn't knock him. any sense into him either. That'll never happen. <laughs> Neither does the snowboarding. <laughs> well, that's the day then. We'll sort that out through the That'll winter. Be, I'll be well keen for that. You're right to come this far north in the winter when but it's yeah. dark nights and stuff. You're well, all right with that? Yeah. Try, yeah once it's literally dark, half an hour down the road from here. Is it? Boasties is, yeah. I see, I've done the Greenfield thing quite a few years okay, ago. Okay, yeah. So Greenfield, um, George's place is about that's 10 or 15 it, yeah. minutes. 
this way. And then both steers is half an hour the other way. Well, okay, but his yeah. is indoor, you see, so right. you can do it in winter. Yeah. It makes life a lot easier. Um, apex to Apex, our friend Woody. Um, how mentally challenging is the endurance racing? It is hard. It is hard. You ask my girlfriend, the sofa. She goes, I don't know why you're doing it. I just don't understand because every time you've done a 24 hour race, you say to me, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> Honestly, at one point or another, you just. You, you just look like zombies. There was me, Emily Larty, and Tom Oliver last year at Boulder, and we were just absolutely ruined. And you're just like, why are we doing this? You know what I mean? Why? But then it's no different to doing a marathon. Like You mm. say, why would someone want to run for 26 miles? And when you're doing it, it's horrible. But then yeah. when you finish, like, oh, that's great. Really enjoyed that. Let's go and do that again. We feel like that about doing 5K. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Hating on it so bad. It's get to be like, that's Can't really be good. to do this. Can't be asked yeah. to do You get like, the endorphins start coming yeah. out and go like, this is why we do it. Because <laughs> I'm trying to lose my dad bod really, really unsuccessfully. And you'll see me in, 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 when you watch the videos and when you watch the YouTube stuff, you'll see me from sometimes. All of a sudden, I'll realize what I'm doing. I'll go, <laughs> really? sit, yeah, sit up. On. <laughs> yeah. Jen's at the back. She, she's like, this, <laughs> this, <Yeah. laughs> sit up straight. Because apparently, I vulture when I get, when somebody's talking, I find it interesting. Oh, really? Start doing this. We started getting bored or something. Oh, my, my, what this. my dad seems to do is when my dad, the more he drinks, he gets lower and lower in his thing <laughs> until like when he's horizontal, you know, he's absolutely pissed because he's like down here. <laughs> Honestly. That's a great way to it's, do it. Yeah, they need like a much. time lapse of it. Oh, that'd be After amazing. Each beer. It'd be like yeah. watching a tree fall in, in the forest. <laughs> yeah. and it just starts he sliding just down. Horizontal. Uh, mate, this has been absolutely superb. Like, time's <laughs> flown by, I think. Is it I mean, yeah, is an it? hour into this? This is absolutely superb. It is past your bedtime. You got <laughs> you got a big day. You got a couple of races tomorrow. Couple races, yeah. um, first time guest, you know the drill. Two questions to finish it off. First one, two parts, favorite corner and why? Favorite corner. Oh, so hard that one. Um, oh God, can I say two? Sure. You um, well, it's not. It's like a complex, like Maggots Beckett. Okay, so that's, that's always yeah, that's 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 well. One no, part, I mean, yeah. I mean two. I mean like that, like that part. Yeah. Like as you come into that right and then that left. Yeah. And then Eau Rouge, it's far. Honestly, when you get that right, it's unreal. I was hoping you'd say Absolutely that. Absolutely unreal. And it's sad. It's, it's annoying because it's like everyone obviously says that. but that No, is, but it's right. Oh, but that that's the bit that, that Linny enjoys it. And it's, it's the same. And I, maybe it's a slightly sore subject. Um, but is it uh, 130R at Spa? Which one's that? When you get oh, it right. The, the, the fast left-hander. Oh, that block. The, oh, the real the fast. Mate, that is Before so you good. come to the... the have you final. ridden Spa yet? Have you ridden Suzuka? Suzuka. Oh, no, I haven't. I know you Suzuka, haven't sorry, raced no. it. I was meant, we were meant to go there this year. This is why I'd... Yeah. Because oh, is that that really, really fast left? Yes. Yeah. Before you come into the complex, come back onto the, the start yeah, finish. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that looks me insane. sounding like I've ridden yeah. <laughs> it. Yeah. <to> me? <laughs> I don't even know the names. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 130R, but it's that real fast left. Yeah, that, that, that looks... Mm, and then cool. usually Stoner Corner at Phillip Island's another one. But yeah. the Eau Rouge, anybody who comes on the show that's ridden Spa tends to be yeah. the, the drop down from La Source through Eau Rouge up and over the top. So cool. I can't even begin to imagine what that's like. Especially when you get it like inch perfect and and it's mad because it's just like hitting a wall. Mm. But you can carry really good lean angle. Like you still be elbow down on the right, but then you're like on the gas and it's completely blind, so you don't know where you're going. So like the first time you when you ride the first two or three days when you ride there, like it is so hard to get right. But then when you get it right and you get on the gas and you come across and just hit the white line on the way out up the chemical shares and that are oh, <laughs> yeah gives me goosebumps it's so good this is the thing <laughs> you're talking about mind you just before we, we go on to the final question what's it like here because I everybody says that you know but it goes on about the mountain it's Cadwell Park yeah instantly think about the mountain mountain yeah I love watching through turn one and up through Charlie's. That's cool, yeah. Because that's so fast through the left, and but then there's a crown well. over the road, yeah. and then it's blind as you go through Charlie's one. What's that been like on the super that's, bike this yeah. weekend? It's always that thing. You always just need to hit your markers and then follow. I see Tommy when I came out of the pits on Friday. Oh, no, I can't remember. I he obviously come past at some point. I actually overtook him. Like I showed him a couple of lines. We'll just like take on to that. And then the <laughs> reigning British Superbike champion. Yeah, champions. Tommy. Yeah, he yeah. <laughs> learned all of his stuff from me in Hauxel back in 2018. Um, and, yeah, we come through the... Those come, are the days. Uh, his, his line was just like out to the white line and just missed all the little bumps and cut back. But yes, yeah, it, when you get it right, I, don't, I haven't got it right yet though. So... <laughs> 
your task tomorrow, tomorrow <laughs> to get that is right. at some point, <laughs> even if it's in morning warm up, yeah. is to get it right, get and then you can tell me what it was it. like at Alton Park yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we get there later on in the when we get there in in three weeks' time. Uh, and the final question, mate, the, it might not be a particular hire car story, but it can be a road trip adventure. What's your best hire car story? Oh God, I haven't got that many. I mean, probably one of Tommy driving in 2018 when we went to the pre-test mate it's just like it's just savage like every single gear like we were staying in this place called La Palma we went to Cartana I think I only went in the car with him once and we nearly died and he just like every single gear like any opportunity like he was just flat out and there was this bridge down down the bottom that was like this like in this the end of this like weird kind of like like hotel not like apartment complex type yeah. of thing and just like he would just hit this thing like flat out because every gear change was like to the limiter and i don't usually get scared like especially if you know some of are like keep driving i was like fuck it it's like <laughs> a bit wild <laughs> there were some good days back happens. in 2018 weren't there with, with yeah. martin household and tommy and that was good yeah it was really it was really it was a good team as well like it kind of didn't weren't quite ready for and i know obviously the focus is always on the superbike and yeah. stuff but it was a good team the people in it were really good italian guys they were really, really, really nice bunch of people as well. Oh, the supersonic block. Yeah, they were. Really? Yeah, that's what he brought them back from Italy. It was yeah. um, Stefano um, Alessa. His name is Alessandro the Alessa. <laughs> and they used to call me, hey, Wardy. <laughs> <laughs> so then we say, hey, Wardy. Um, I can't remember the other bloke's name, but they were really, really good. Yeah, they were. The, that Alessandro is unbelievable, like electronics wise. Probably one of the best people I've ever worked with. But he's in my OGP now, so he's obviously... Oh, he's, yeah, so he's yeah, done all right for himself. Yeah, yeah, God, yeah. He's done okay. Mr. Bean, the Italian Mr. Bean. <laughs> That's literally what he looks like. <laughs> Mate, this has been absolutely super. Thank you for your time tonight. Oh, it's been a busy... It, our pleasure. It's been a busy weekend for you. I really want to wish you all the best for the two races tomorrow. Thank you very much. It's going to be great. And what, what's the plans for the rest of the year before we finish? Um, I'm going to Boldor. Going to finish, um, do Boldor with a T. Um, obviously, <laughs> Paul Ricard. Easy back. We're just wrapping up. Do you want to come in on this or not? Come on, come sit up here. Yeah. Come sit on my lap. We're literally just we're just wrapping this up, and you're coming in now. <laughs> Darren Fry still sniffing the barmaid's apron. He's still peering in through the window. Look at this. Love you, love you, Dazzler. Love you more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He's, what, what a guy. Sorry, for the rest of the year? Yeah, so we've got Boldor next, uh, which is on the 14th of September. So that's a 24-hour race. Um, and then I think I'm going to be doing with Armada for yep. Donington and Brands. That's the plan. So, yeah, Excellent. I'm really looking forward to it because I like committed to the team in the World Endurance. And it's obviously, I don't know what I'm going to do next year. Um, but it'd be really nice to finish on a high with the team and we've got our like dream team back me Tom Oliver and Emily Larty so we're like a proper we're like the we call ourselves a wolf pack we literally are like bar we like bark at each other all the time like people just like are these guys alright we're just like barking there's nothing wrong with that no you boys are out there. It's enjoying your racing. <laughs> oh, this is yeah. what enjoying racing is about. This is this is going motorcycle racing with your mates. Serious when it needs to be. You gotta kind of fucking enjoy it. Oh, definitely. That's the, the, it. Comes as a but the, the the rest of it comes as a byproduct. Yeah. When, you, when you're enjoying riding, the wins and the trophies, the fast times and all that comes as a byproduct. All the time, you go out there. I've got to do well. I've got to do well. You won't do well. No. You just won't do well. And the alternative of not riding just sucks. Yeah. Oh God, it does. Yeah. It's yeah, one of those things. We well, wish you all the best for the rest of the cool. season, mate. Thank you Thank so much for, no. for coming up to see us tonight. Congratulations on the on the the, uh, yeah. the efforts today. Yeah, because that was a superb performance. No, I really appreciate that. Same again good. tomorrow. Let's see yeah. how we get on, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Morty. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, thanks, mate. What Thank a pleasure. That was really cool. Thank you.